Hello, this is Dr. Mugan Patel from Patel Eye Care and Laser Center, Bhuj. Uh, today I'm here with a new beautiful case. A 32-year-old female, she had a trauma three years ago and presently the best character vision was 660. And you can clearly see there was six clock hours on your dialysis, which was temporarily. And the beauty about this case was the anterior hyaloid was intact and there was grade two nucleus sclerosis. So take out the notes and note down things to keep in mind while performing the surgery to avoid the complication. And here comes the first. First is to maintain the stable anterior chamber. Second is the capsulorexis. Third comes with the techniques and method of FACO. And fourth is how and when to perform cortical wash. And the fifth one is definitely the CT ring. When and how to put the CT ring. And the last one is IOL type and the position of the IOL. Now let's start with the video and go through all the steps. Here we are making around 1 to 1.5 mm oblique incision for the AC maintainer and two more side spots around 1 mm and 150 degree apart from each other for the better manipulation of the instrument. And now here comes the AC maintainer which we will insert first in the AC and will remove last from the AC and we should insert it with the rotational movement around 1 mm tip should be inside the AC. Now let's start with the capsular axis first. While performing the capsular axis you can observe there are intercapsular folds which is suggestive of zonular weakness. So while performing the capsular axis we should avoid any stress on the zonules and make sure we perform the capsular axis away from the dialysis area. As you can see, I am trying to keep around 1 to 1.5 mm gap from the zonules. And the size should be around 4.5 to 5 mm to uh, perform proper FACO emulsification. And my preferred technique for the capsular axis is with the modified cystitome, just for the better control of the capsular axis. Now comes the main part. As you can see, I am making it temporarily because it was difficult for me to position the patient on other side so I prefer the temporal main entry while performing the hydrodissection you should make sure that hydrodissection is gently been performed and avoid uh, any type of uh, nuclear rotation and there must be complete separation of endonuclear with the cortex now we are starting with the FACO for complicated cases I'll suggest you should perform the best FACO technique for yourself and for me it is stop and chop so here I am performing the stop and chop with low FACO parameters. I'll start with the sculpting and the trench should be around 80 to 90 percent of the nuclear thickness and try to avoid mechanical stress on the zonules. Uh, after complete this 80 to 90 percent of the trenching thickness try to separate the nucleus gently and avoid the stress on zonules. After completion of the nuclear separation, start emulsifying the hemi-nuclear portion. We should make sure the emulsification of that hemi-nuclear portion must be performed at the level of the iris plane and in the center area just to avoid the uneven stress on the zonules and perform this all under the low parameter and gently. And now when it comes to the last portion of the nucleus, as you can see, the posterior capsule is very lax because of the zonular weakness. So maintaining the anterior chamber IOP is very important. For this case, we have put uh, AC maintainer. So for us, it was not much a worrisome point because the IOP was not much fluctuated during the FACO. Now you can see only the cortical matter is remaining. So we'll start removing the cortical matter. Here I'm using a single Simco because the AC maintainer is performing the irrigation part that is one more advantage of the AC maintainer and uh, to just avoid the stress on the zonules you can see I am using releasing and regrasping method for the cortical wash uh, you should avoid the tangential force on the cortical matter just to avoid the zonular stress so instead of uh, tangential force we should start with the circular force here you can see I am using it circularly to pull the cortical matter but I have to use the releasing method and regrasping it because it was giving so much of the zonal stress. At this very point any type of fluctuation in the anterior chamber pressure 
will lead to uh, anterior hyaloid disturbance that will complicate the surgery more so for us in this case ac maintainer is a very key key role position which was continuously maintaining the iop so the anterior hyaloid face was intact and nothing to worry some about the iop changes at this stage uh, when to put the ct ring is very vital for the surgery but yet i am not finding it very important to put right now so i try to remove uh, some more amount of the cortical matter use you, you can see you should use the circular force not the tangential now to keep the laxity of the anterior capsule and the posterior capsule away i use a dialer you can see now i'm inserting a dialer just to hold and support the anterior capsule and after that i'll start removing the cortical matter now here i tried to remove cortical matter for few more times but uh, then i realize the addition is bit more so now i feel like inserting the ct ring so let's start with inserting the ct ring uh, while inserting the ct ring the major part that we should be concerned about is the laxity of the zonule so while inserting it inside the capsule you should be uh, aware of where exactly the zonular weakness is there so try to insert it away from the zonular weakness part by gradually pushing it inside here as you can see i am trying to put it inside in a such way that it is not pulling the dial uh, the dialysis area and now at the terminal portion just to gradually put it inside the back capsular bag i'll use a micro forcep and a dialer we should make sure it should not go inside the sulcus because once it go inside the sulcus it's very difficult to put it back inside the capsular bag and now after the completion of uh, ct ring insertion you can see that uh, capsular axis is came already almost in the center portion that means the ct is inside the capsular bag and well placed and now i started to remove that uh, remaining part of the cortical matter and it becomes really easy for me to remove the remaining part because of the constant strength provided by the ct ring to the weakness area of the zonules and now comes the key part to insert the iol so before insertion we'll make sure to inflate the capsular bag properly with the viscoelastic and now we start putting the iol inside the bag primarily we our aim is to put first leading haptic inside the capsular bag and now with the use of dialer we will insert both the haptic inside the bag and the aim should be that that one of the haptic should stay at the uh, zonular dialysis area just to strengthen out the zonular uh, dialysis area more as you can see both the haptics have been separated and now i'll try to put other second haptic inside the bag now which is successfully uh, moved inside the bag and with the use of dialer again i'll try to put the haptic at the zonular weakness area now you can see the iol is well centered and inside the capsular bag this is a 7 day post op photograph as you can see this is the cornea is very well clear and iol is centered it patient was very happy and stable thank you for watching the video hope you like the video